Hi, my name is Pete Dagan from Dagan and Story, and this is our submission to the South Tyneside Manufacturing Tech Challenge 2017. The caveat to this, as you're about to find out, is that I am not a slick YouTube presenter, uh, so uh, you'll forgive me if I um and ah a little bit. Nevertheless, we thought it was more useful to do a very brief video to talk about uh, the thing that we'd like to talk about, which is a piece of software called Client and uh, it's better than a bit more engaging than doing it in a written submission format. Uh, we hope you'll agree. We'll find out now whether or not we're right. Here we go. So, welcome to Dagan and Story. Cellpack Solutions met Peter Kerr, our digital director, a couple of weeks ago when you did your open day. Uh, and my name is Pete Dagan, I'm the MD. I came out to see Dyer Engineering. Uh, thanks for your time, Richard. Really good to meet you and find out some of the challenges you guys have. Hopefully Nissan know a little bit about us through the work we've been doing with your QA department on social listening um, and diagnosing problems with your cars uh, through Twitter and uh, other user-generated channels. Um, oh, there you go, told you I wasn't slick. Um, Dagan and Story began life as a digital marketing agency just over three years ago, so we're relatively young um, and certainly an emerging agency in the Northeast. With the addition of Peter Kerr this year, we have added sales enablement to it. Peter is a very experienced consultant and allows us to do the whole engagement nose to tail piece from um, acquisition through pay per click, search engine optimization, content marketing, social all the way through to, uh, to conversion rate optimization, engagement on websites, um, through conversion to sales teams and making sure that the follow-up calls are in line with the branding, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of what we do centers around basically that, which is generating leads for people and generating sales. That though is a bit of a Trojan horse in that that's what gets us into businesses. And then once we're talking to people, we find out what they really need. And that tends to be around two of the remaining three areas of operation, mainly digital transformation and software product development. Digital transformation is the piece on uh, taking systems and processes in your business and using digital techniques, data sharing, um, databases, data visualization, all that kind of stuff uh, to make things cheaper, faster, more efficient. Really interesting part of what we do and absolutely growing market for us. Um, we're beginning to touch on some of the emerging technologies, uh, lots of stuff in the minute around uh, beacons, uh, bits and pieces on VR, AR, um, and some stuff on drones. Um, I'll be completely honest, we are not uh, technical specialists in those areas. Uh, we tend to deal more with the business process side of things and the data integration side of stuff, the dashboarding of things and the actual making the systems relevant to human beings where we need specific technical um, expertise. We partner with people for whom that is their day job because it's much better to get specialists. Um, and the last bit of what we do, the software and product development, every now and then an interesting idea crosses our desk and we think, you know what, we can build that. We've got a team of in-house developers and a really talented um, product management part of what we do. Um, also, sometimes we'll develop something for one client and realize that it's got mass appeal and maybe that makes more financial sense for us to have one thing we develop um, that can sell to multiple people. Um, and so we started a product development side of the business about a year or two ago, um, and that's now happily spinning out products as we go. So that's the, the main areas in which we operate. And I think it's probably fair to say that normally uh, when we would deal with Zalpa or Dai or even Nissan, what we would normally do is sit down with you guys at the start of the process, identify your main or your easiest to fix problems, uh, look at those and look at ways of solving those and obviously be some kind of uh, diagnostic and then maybe some kind of tech road mapping, um, some kind of process that we go through that, that comes out with some specific requirements at the end of that. That's clearly not uh, appropriate in the context of this challenge. Clearly it's something that we can do if you have specific issues you'd like us to look at. Um, what we're interested for this challenge is um, where there is commonality in the various and different challenges that you guys have articulated. And I've listed some of them here. 
Uh, so when we came out of South Park, when we went to Dyer, what we know this sound, some of the things that you guys have issues with are systems not being joined up, uh, staff engagement, how you might become easier for people to do business with, attracting talent, skills mapping, um, specific, specific technical challenges. Um, that might be, you know, interfacing a new uh, piece of software or a big CRM system or something with something else in your business. Um, it could be uh, all sorts of very specific things that only you need, um, but require some development work or some kind of technical integration or some maybe some dashboarding, uh, staff development, brand articulation, and employee retention. Uh, that's a wide church. And um, what's interesting about it, though, is that although they may be various and different, actually a lot of the things that you guys mentioned concern staff development. And the thing that we would like to talk to you about today is a piece of software that we've developed called Climb that centers around skills development specifically uh, amongst employees. Staff development is a massive issue, um, both for manufacturing businesses and for businesses more widely. Uh, there's all sorts of facts and figures out there uh, that highlights the massive challenge that UK engineering companies have, in particular, um, in identifying senior or highly skilled, skilled engineers, um, and even at the lower level, getting uh, good people to do um, entry-level engineering work is becoming increasingly a problem. Uh, it's not just a problem that you guys have in engineering, in manufacturing. Um, it's a problem that uh, businesses in the general community face. As a digital agency, we have terrible trouble getting uh, website developers, programmers, um, application developers, and you know, data scientists, people who are particularly good with, uh, with data. Um, there is a huge demand for them, and we have all these the same problems, and we're having to you know, upskill our workforce in exactly the same way you guys are as well. And uh, loads of businesses have this issue. Um, there are all sorts of things being done now around engaging kids in STEM subjects, STEM academies, um, apprenticeship, uh, innovation amongst HE and FE that's brought on trailblazer uh, apprenticeships and some great work being done there. But it's going to take time before that pipeline of skills staff is opened. And for businesses like yours and businesses like mine, the reality of the situation is that we are going to have to meet the skills gap, bridge the skills gap through upskilling our existing staff, which is difficult. And in that context, we want to talk to you about Climb. Uh, Climb started off life as a piece of software that we developed um, to help us do better appraisals, better performance reviews. There was nothing out there at the moment, uh, in the market at the moment, that we were looking at it that actually did that, and there still isn't. We still haven't found anything that elegantly handles, um, elegantly handles performance reviews. And in the process of doing it, uh, and this is more by good luck than good judgment, I hasten to add, um, we heard about a big change that's coming, and that big change is obviously the UK government's apprenticeship levy. Um, unless you've been living under a rock, and I'm sure you haven't. Um, you'll know that from the actually from the sixth of April, but you know, starting payment from the first of May, um, UK businesses with over three million pounds of wage bills will have to pay not a five percent apprenticeship levy that they can claim back against training. The training is very specific in what you can and can't do, and has to be approved by a specific training advisor, and has to be delivered according to one of the standards that are being developed as part of the Trailblazer Apprenticeship Scheme. Um, for businesses that do that, the government will top up their spend with an additional 10% that they can claim back. Um, and it's very simple uh, and hopefully should all be done online, should all be pretty easy to do. For businesses under £3 million wage bill, uh, they don't have to do this until 2018 at the earliest. Um, however, they can choose to do it with their staff and they can receive a 90% co-investment contribution by the government, uh, which basically means that if you can um, get your training to fall in line with the uh, approved apprenticeship schemes, um, then the government will pay 90% of, uh, of your costs, which is obviously very attractive. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. 
And unfortunately, um, looking at a lot of the most recent writing, this is from Sheila Atwood and from Expert HR a couple of days ago, um, many businesses that have to pay just simply aren't ready for it. Uh, we're only a couple of months away at the moment, and as Sheila puts it very well, um, a bunch of businesses that will have to pay haven't really thought through the implications. Some are going to find out that Effectively, they're just going to have to massively increase the number of apprentices that they take on in order to recover these costs um, and uh, and increase the amount of training that they give existing members of staff. Um, for those that don't qualify above the threshold, um, there are very few organisations that are going to take full advantage of the 90% training. Um, and actually what they need to do, what smaller businesses need to do, uh, is look at other training that they have perhaps put off in the past due to cost, um, but also any other training that they can do with existing members of staff um, that meets the new criteria set out by government and look at how they can use the apprenticeship levy as a way of getting government to effectively pay for most of that. And that's really important. One of the things that's been missed in this apprenticeship levy um, is that it's not just for traditional apprenticeship age, people aged 16 to 18, it's for existing members of staff as well. Um, and it can be used for pretty much any training up to degree level, provided that there is a standard for it. And the standard, there's all sorts of standards here around leadership and management, around specific manufacturing um, courses, um, and all sorts of other things as well. Uh, and there are no shortage of training providers further education, higher education providers out there who are uh, making a business out of delivering some of this stuff. Um, so it should be fairly easy to get it done. Um, so, so what? So those people that win out of the apprenticeship levy um, will be the people that put a system in place that does a few clear things. Uh, they are setting business objectives that everybody understands. Uh, this is particularly pertinent to, uh, to Dyer. Uh, one of the challenges that Richard articulated was the fact that they've done a lot of work on some great stuff about internal messaging and um, you know, mission statements, value statements, all of that kind of thing, um, but that it just isn't pervading down to the shop floor. Um, once you've set clear objectives and articulated those in a way that is relevant to everybody, um, there's a piece of work on standardizing an appraisal process. Um, and one of the reasons appraisals for most organizations fall down is because um, skills assessment and performance assessment isn't objective. Uh, it's not measured against a, a scoring system that is useful um, and allows people to understand why they've been scored a particular score because it is specifically tied to a, a certain performance level. Um, and uh, having a system that does that allows you to basically uh, objectively assess employees on an individual level and then mesh those things together um, in order to work out where you've got shortages of skills, um, how your business is set up and whether or not that's done in the most uh, obvious or most effective way uh, and importantly identify opportunities for staff development so for me i can look at my say development team i can find out how many people have got .NET skills how many people have got php skills how many angular js match that against what i need uh, set up teams accordingly and upskill the people in the areas where there uh, there's a gap um, and make sure that there are the right people across the right teams so that I've got coverage in each of the different areas. Um, the other thing that um, the, the winners in the apprenticeship levy will do is, um, is they'll basically, having identified the areas for development, they'll be able to then deliver, monitor, and record this development uh, in a robust, auditable, auditable format. Uh, an audit here is, uh, is really important. Um, if we can chart employee development and if we can specifically prove that where retraining takes place, um, it is retraining of something that somebody hasn't been uh, funded for doing before, um, then it can be legitimately funded from the apprenticeship levy and there will be drawback for, uh, there will be drawdown for, for money from the government. Um, and at the moment, most businesses just simply don't have a way of proving that. They don't know um, what 
courses employees have had when um, and there's no kind of there's no auditable trail that they can point the government at to say that this is new stuff that the business really needs. If they do that, they will clearly maximise their training investment um, and get the most money back from the levy uh, and the allowance that the government provides them as a result of it. But climb isn't just about the levy. As I said before, I originally started off as something that we wanted to do because uh, it was the best way to develop our staff. Um, and all of the problems that you guys have about attracting the best staff, retaining the best staff, making sure that staff are engaged, uh, identifying problems early and all of that kind of thing are problems that we faced as well. Um, and whilst the apprenticeship levy is a really important part of why climb is relevant for uh, most businesses, including manufacturing businesses right now, um, there are other really useful um, ancillary benefits to it as well. The main one being staff engagement. Um, in my experience doing appraisals for 15 years, um, and we have a team of about 20, so it's not a huge team, but it's big enough to do a few of these. Uh, people just want to know what's expected of them in their jobs uh, and how they're doing relative to that expectation. Um, and an objective and robust appraisal process uh, should articulate both of those things. Uh, Client does that. It, it also links skills development with overarching objectives. So the objectives of the business um, are tied specifically to the, uh, the training and learning that you're asking people to, uh, to undertake. Um, and that's really powerful because it really shows employees how their development feeds into the growth and development of the overarching company itself. Um, and it gives them a bit of context for why we're asking them to do these things and what's important to us um, so that they can work out how they can uh, they can answer that. Um, the second big thing uh, that Klein brings businesses is um, is a way of monitoring happiness and by doing so increasing retention of good staff. Um, we have a module in Climb that regularly surveys staff on a series of happiness questions um, and we can talk about amending those if you've got specific ones you want to answer um, and that helps you identify risk employees uh, and provides early warning of issues. Uh, this is absolutely crucial. Clearly staff turnover is one of the most damaging things that uh, businesses like ours face. Um, and the more we can do to make sure that our staff are happy and retain them, um, the lower our churn is and the more money we save. So what? What are we up to? What have we got and what haven't we got? Um, we, it's important to say, it's really important to say, actually, that uh, we're already working with Climb. Climb is, it exists. This is not vaporware. Um, this is real software. I can show you now, in fact. Uh, it's real software that we've already built, um, and I can query it. I've got some dummy data in uh, this one. I've got real data as well for my company, but I'm not going to show you that at this stage. Um, but this is all stuff that is there that we can mess around with, and we can see live data working across skills profiles for a, uh, in this case, fictional department. Um, but this is there. This is stuff that is, is out there now and it exists. Uh, we're currently in alpha, we're due to roll out to beta in April, so from the start of next month, um, basically other businesses will be using this stuff in anger, so this is pretty much production ready. Uh, that's a great time to be getting involved with, with us because um, it means that a lot of the heavy lifting is being done, but it's still not too late to have a say in how the, uh, the actual product is developed. Um, and uh, and basically shape the way that this piece of software comes to market. Um, it can either run in the cloud managed by us or it can run locally on your system managed by you. Um, and we can help you with the setup process as well. Uh, obviously, it's something that we've done a few times, so it's a bit quick for us to do and explain it. Um, and there's a potentially a whole consultancy element to what we do as well if it's something that you guys want us to look at. Um, with the locally, you know, what we're calling the enterprise version, uh, you might have specific requirements for how that interfaces with, say, your uh, employee data from Sage. Um, and because we have a team of developers in-house, uh, anything like that, you know, if you want us to feed into your CRM system or anything else, um, we can look at interfacing it with anything else that you've got and we can look at how, how that works. 
Um, similarly, uh, you know, I mentioned before that you've got an opportunity to shape this. We've got a full development roadmap. There are all sorts of, you know, we're, we're go going to market with all the key features that most businesses will need. Um, but there's all sorts of plans in the future to add all sorts of other features. That will be a dynamic document or development roadmap uh, based on, you know, the requests of our customers. Um, but one of the things we know we need to do and one of the things we really want to do is include some kind of API so we can integrate it with, you know, people's existing systems or indeed the government systems for, for coring back the funding from the apprenticeship levy when that's all announced. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about this um, and it came out of a conversation with Richard at Dyer is the opportunity to add manufacturing specific modules. So Richard uh, articulated to us uh, two things that would make it really attractive to, uh, to Dyer. One is if we could tie it to quality issues. So um, if there was particular issues with a particular employee, um, we could, you know, identify the issues, uh, mark them in the learning journey of that person, identify some remedial training, sort them out, put them on that course, monitor the completion of it, um, and clearly then in the future, there's no excuse for the same quality issues happening again. And you have an auditable trail that will allow you to manage that through the HR process. Uh, the second one um, is health and safety. Uh, so, um, you know, he's very keen that everybody's given all of the um, health and safety training that they need to operate the machinery in, uh, in the plant uh, effectively and most importantly safely. Um, and in the event that something does go wrong, having an audit tool, um, an audit trail that, you know, points to who's had what training when um, is a really, really useful um useful document to have um, and whilst we don't have either of those modules at the moment neither are particularly hard to build um, and both could be added to relatively rapidly if you and or other manufacturing companies felt that they were uh, useful. Uh, the last thing that's worth mentioning is that we're looking to partner with HE and FE bodies and training providers uh, in order to uh, integrate delivery of some of this learning. Um, we are not nor do we wish to be training providers ourselves that's very specific set of skills that we don't have and don't want. Um, but clearly, if, we are, if we're diagnosing skills gaps, um, coming up with areas where employees can be developed, um, it makes sense for us to be talking to the people who are approved by government to provide the training um, that can be called back in order to, do, uh, to increase skills in those areas. Um, and that's something that we're doing with local colleges, uh, independent training providers, and all sorts of other, um, other groups at the moment. And that's where we are. Um, we think this is a tremendously exciting uh, piece of software. We think it really, you know, we've used it. It really does work. It really does help with staff, um, staff retention, staff engagement. Um, and it really does add a whole structure uh, and saves a load of time in doing staff appraisals and performance reviews. Uh, we think it's something that could be of mass appeal to a load of organizations in the manufacturing sector, which makes it really relevant for the South Tyneside Manufacturing Challenge. Um, and we would love to get the opportunity to come and speak to you about it more if selected for the next round uh, of the competition. Um, being in marketing, I am contractually obliged to end every presentation with a motivational quote and this is my one for climb um, love this quote Malcolm X education is our passport to the future but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today um, you know it's a bit cheesy isn't it but it's absolutely right um, like I said before one of the things about this apprenticeship levy is there will be winners and losers uh, one of the things about upskilling your workforce generally and you know placing primacy on the importance of um, of the people in your organization uh, is that the people that do it well, the people that put their people at the center of what they do, they'll thrive. Um, and in a world where we are increasingly only as good as the people we employ, um, the necessity to do this is increasing all of the time. I think you know, this quote has never, ever been more relevant, more pertinent than it is today. But that's it. I'll keep it as brief as I can. Hopefully that's given you a flavour of what we do and hopefully it's whetted your appetite enough to uh, to ask us some more. Clearly we're available for any questions on Climb or any other projects that you think might be interested uh, interesting for us. 
Um, and fingers crossed, we look forward to seeing you guys face-to-face at the next stage. Thanks very much for your time.